Hi, everyone. Welcome to Grace for Today. I'm Pastor Aaron Purdue here at Caris Christian Center in Colorado Springs. I'm here with my dad, Pastor Lawson Purdue. We are sharing from the book of Hebrews today. So if you have your Bibles, open them to Hebrews. We're sharing a series called The Better Covenant. My dad has a great book, Hebrews, The Better Covenant. If you'd like to order this book, give us a call. We'd be happy to ship it to you. Praise God. And we're talking about what makes this covenant better today. We are in Hebrews chapter 7. We're going to go from Hebrews chapter 7 to Hebrews chapter 10. But right in the middle of this in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6, it says we have a better covenant established on better promises. And what makes it better is Jesus. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 7 that Jesus is the surety of the new covenant. So he's the guarantee. So the promises of the covenant are guaranteed to us because of Christ's work. In the Old Testament, it was about man's performance, but nobody could ever perform well enough to receive the benefits of the covenant. So if they, if they received blessing, it was because they received it by faith, but not because they performed well. But here in the new covenant, we receive the blessings of the covenant because we have put our faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and the promises are uh, given to us they're guaranteed to us because of Christ's work. So in Hebrews chapter 7, he says this, that we have a better priest. And he really begins to talk about that. He really talks about in the beginning for this Melchizedek, king of Salem or Jerusalem, the city of peace, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first beginning uh, being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that king of Salem or king of peace. He was without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God and abides a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, Melchizedek, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the sp uh, spoil. Verily they who are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes from Abraham. He says, and blessed him that had the promise. Without all contradiction, the less is blessed by the better. So Melchizedek blessed Abraham. And he goes on and says, here, he says, here men die who receive tithes, but there he receives them. Now he begins to speak of Jesus, the great high priest of the new covenant, to whom it's witness that he lives. And this I say, so Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. So when we begin to talk about this better priest, what he's saying, since we had a change of the covenant, we have to have a change of the priesthood. And so in the, in the Old Covenant, Abraham, who was the father of the tribe of Levi, essentially, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then Jacob had Levi, but Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek. But when Levi came, Levi received tithes from the people. So he says, since we have a better covenant, we have to have a better priest because Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek. Now Le Levi's been receiving tithes. And he said, Ab Levi paid tithes in Abraham. Now, when the Bible says that Levi paid tithes in Abraham, it's not talking about what Levi did. It's talking about what Abraham did. So we could say that Abraham's gift satisfied the debt of many generations. But now, he says, since we have a new covenant, with the, we have to have a better priest. And since we have to have a better priest, um, Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek and, and, and then people were tithing to Levi, but we have to have a better priest than the Levitical priesthood. So we have to have a change of priesthood. So he begins to talk about how Jesus, the great high priest of the new covenant, receives tithes today. He that lives receives those tithes today. And so Abraham's debt satisfied, Abraham's gift, excuse me, satisfied the debt of many generations, but Jesus' gift satisfied the, uh, debt of every generation. And so we don't tithe today out of a sense of debt, but we tithe or we give out of a, and, and when I give, I give as a seed that I sow because a seed that I sow has a future. If I'm giving out a sense of debt, it has no future on it. But Jesus' debt, Jesus' gift already satisfied the debt 
of every generation. And so when I give today, whether, whether I'm tithing, which is the first tenth, or whether I'm giving offerings, or whether I'm giving alms, I like to do all my giving as a seed that I sow. Because when I give as a seed that I sow, it has a future on it. And the only time the Bible talks about paying tithes is right here in Hebrews chapter 7. It's not talking about what Levi did. It's talking about what Abraham did that satisfied the debt of Levi. So what Jesus did satisfied every debt. So today we give, but it's not out of a sense of debt or obligation. It's, it's out of a willing heart. We give as a seed that we sow. Awesome. I love that, um, you know, Jesus, he's not um, after the order of Levi, but he's more after the order of Melchizedek. He's more of a priest, kind of like Melchizedek was. The Bible says that Melchizedek was without father, without mother. Um, he, he was an eternal priest, so Jesus is, is a priest after the order of Melchizedek. One thing I like about Mel Melchizedek was that he was both a king and a priest. In the Old Covenant, there was a clear division of roles between the priests and the kings. A king couldn't be both priest and king. There was a separation of powers. But Jesus, he has all authority, all power. So he is the, the king of kings, but he's also the great high priest. He is both king and priest. Melchizedek was both a king and a priest as well. So that's awesome. So today we come to Jesus, who's our great high priest, and he's also the king of kings and lord of lords. Mm -hmm. Now we go on, and what he's saying here, he says, if in verse 11 of Hebrews 7, if perfection were by the Le Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need there was there of another priest that would rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, therefore it's a necessity, a change of the law. He's saying we have a change of law and we have a change of priesthood. We've went from the old covenant to the new covenant. Mm -hmm. And we've went from the old priesthood that... Aaron, you know, the Levitical priesthood into the priesthood of Jesus. And so Jesus is the great high priest of the new covenant, and we are a kingdom of priests. Mm -hmm. So we are priesthood of believers. He says, for there's a priesthood being changed, there's a change of the law, for he of whom these things are spoken pertains to another tribe, which no longer men gave attendance to the altar, for it's evident that Jesus sprang out of Judah, which is the tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning the priesthood. And it's yet far more evident that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who was made not after the law of a carnal or fleshly commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifies, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there verily is a disannulling of the commandment or the old covenant going before because of the weakness and the unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect. It didn't make anything whole. It didn't make anything complete. But he says, the bringing in of a better hope did by which we draw near to God. Thank God we have a new hope through grace. Amen. We have a better hope through Jesus. And so in as much as not without an oath that he was made priest, for those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said to him, the Lord swear he will not repent. You are a priest forever after the uh, order of Melchizedek. So God the Father made Jesus this high priest of the new covenant by so much more. Jesus was made the guarantee of a better testament. Mm -hmm. Thank God. So Jesus is what guarantees. The promises of the covenant are guaranteed to us because of Christ's work. They truly were many priests in the Old Testament because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. So we found in Hebrews chapter 6 that we have the unchangeable word of the unchangeable God. And now we have an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, speaking of Jesus, he is able to save them to the uttermost or completely that come to God by him, seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. So Jesus can save us spirit, soul, and body. He can save us, make us whole, make us well, every area of our life. And it says he ever lives to make intercession for this. So Jesus lives, he's, he's seated on the right hand of God and he lives to make intercession for those who come to God by him. So when we come to God in Jesus' name, Jesus is there and we receive from God based on what Jesus has already done. Mm -hmm. And I like that, that, um, that topic of intercession. You know, um, a lot of people talk about inter intercessory prayer or in the Old Testament, the priests would, uh, they were intercessors. They would pray 
on behalf of people to God. They would go into the presence of God on behalf of people. They would offer sacrifices on behalf of people. So they were interceding, kind of acting as an intermediary between God and people. But, uh, you know, really our greatest intercessor today in the new covenant is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Because he intercedes for us always. There's one um, God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus, who Mm -hmm. gave himself a sacrifice for all, an offering for all to be testified in due time. The Bible talks about that in 1 Timothy chapter 2. So Jesus is this great high priest, and he is the greatest intercessor. In fact, a lot of what people try to do in intercession, intercession, and the Bible talks about prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, 1 Timothy chapter 2, in the beginning of it. But when the Bible's talking about us interceding, it just means that we pray to God on the behalf of another. Mm -hmm. But we don't in any way take the place of Jesus, and we have one praying for us. Jesus told Peter, Peter, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And thank God, Jesus, our great high priest, is praying for us. Mm -hmm. And he ever lives to make intercession Mm -hmm. uh, for those of us who come to God by him. So when you come to Jesus, there is none higher than him. Mm -hmm. Praise God. There's no greater intercessor than Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so it says this, he ever lives to make intercession for us, for such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. So Jesus is holy, he's never sinned. Mm -hmm. He's harmless, he's undefiled. He he is separate from sinners, he is completely separate. And so when he goes into God's presence, he gets gets things accomplished. And when we pray to God in Jesus' name, it's as if we go before God's presence, just as if Jesus Christ himself was standing there. Mm -hmm. And so he says, this high priest that we have does not need daily in verse 27 as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's, which he did once when he offered them up himself. For the law makes men priests who have weakness, but the word of the covenant, which was since the law, makes the son who is consecrated forevermore. So Jesus is forever sanctified. He's forever seated at the right hand of God. And Jesus is the one, our great high priest, who's praying for us. And thank God our prayers can be answered because of what Jesus has already done. Thank God for the work he's already done. That's awesome. Now, not only do we have a great high priest and a new priest in this new covenant, and and this makes the covenant better, but we have a better covenant. And that's what Hebrews chapter 8 talks about. So we jump into Hebrews 8, and he says, Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens, a minister of the sanctuary of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not men. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifice, whereof it's a necessity that this man have somewhat to offer. So these high priests offered sacrifices, but Jesus has something better to offer. He says, For if he were on the earth, he would not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to law, who serve under the example and shadow of heavenly things. And Moses was admonished of God that he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, says he, that you make all things according to the pattern shown you in the mount. But now he obtained a more excellent ministry, speaking of Jesus, by how much more he is the mediator of a better covenant which is established on better promises. Hmm. Again, there's one God and there's one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself an offering, a sacrifice for all, to be testified in due time. And so he says, for if the first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for the second, but finding fault with them, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant and I regarded them not, says the Lord. So in the old covenant, the old covenant basically said, if you do this, then I'll do this. But the new covenant is I'm gonna do this. I'll be merciful to your sins and your iniquities will I remember no more. So the new covenant is no, not established because of our work. The new covenant is established because of the work of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so he says, this new covenant I, that I will make with the house of Israel after those deaths, says, says the Lord in Hebrews 8.10, I'll put my laws in their mind, write them in their hearts. 
I'll be to them a God, they'll be to me a people, and they will not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, know the Lord, for all will know me from the least to the greatest. This is the greatest aspect of the gospel right here. This is the greatest goal of the gospel. God says, all will know me from the least to the greatest. And the greatest aspect, I believe, of the new covenant is this, that we can know God. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection being made conformable to his death. Thank God we can know Jesus. And he said, we're not going to have people have to teach us, don't do this and don't do that and don't do something else. They're going to know me. And listen to what he says in verse 12. He says, for I'm going to be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Thank God. God is not remembering our sin. He's not remembering our unrighteousness. God got over our sin at the cross. We have been reconciled to God by the death of Jesus Christ. All of our sin has been paid for, mm -hmm. you know, and since God got over it, we need to get over it. Since God let it go, we need to let it go. Mm -hmm. And we need to go on and move forward in our life and, you know, go into the presence of God mm -hmm. and worship Jesus. He says in that he says a new covenant, verse 13, he has made the first old, now that which decays and waxes old is ready to vanish away. So we not only have a new priest, Jesus, the great high priest of the new covenant, we are a priesthood of believers, and we have a new covenant. And the old covenant, you know, the promises of it were based on our performance. And if you tried to get the promises of the old covenant because of performance, you'd strike out. Mm -hmm. every time because you couldn't perform well enough. Well, I think that's what um, kind of Hebrews 8 is talking about when, um, um, you know, the first covenant, if it had been faultless, the fault with the first covenant wasn't the, wasn't the, the word of God itself, but the fault with the first covenant was man. Man right. couldn't, th th no, no man can perfectly live up to the law, can perfectly live up to that first covenant. So the fault isn't with God, the fault is with man. Yeah, and so... It was, and, and actually Paul talked about that in Romans chapter seven. Mm -hmm. He said, I want, and he's talking about a man living under the law. Mm -hmm. And he said, I wanted to do right, but I didn't. And I didn't want to do wrong, but I did it anyway. And mm -hmm. I, he says, I find a law that's working against me. Mm -hmm. You know, the law of the, you know, the, the body, <laughs> you know, and, sin and, and death. Everyone's, everyone's has fault. You know, the Bible says also in Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Right, so we all failed. So God sent Jesus and Jesus lived perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus died on the cross and he took our sins and he paid for our sins. Mm -hmm. And so now we're reconciled to God by the death of Jesus Christ and we're restored to right relationship with God. There were people who were blessed in the old covenant, mm -hmm. but they weren't blessed because they performed well. Mm -hmm. They were blessed because they believed well. Mm -hmm. And it says all who believe in Galatians chapter three about verse nine are blessed with believing Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham was a very blessed man, but, but he believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. That was before the law came into mm -hmm. existence. So there were people that were blessed in the old covenant, but they weren't blessed because they performed well. They're blessed because they believed well. Mm -hmm. So God came in Jesus essentially and did what we could not do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And now when you believe on Jesus, you receive the benefits of the covenant based on Christ's work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times when, if somebody just gets saved, they come to Jesus and say, I'm coming just like I am. Mm -hmm. I'm a sinner, God, I need you, Jesus, forgive me. And, and they just receive like that mm -hmm. because they're not trusting their own works, but give them 20 years in the church. And they're like, Lord, I came to church and I paid my tithes and I was kind to my neighbor and I prayed and I, it's not because you came to church and paid your tithes and were kind to your neighbor. And, and you know, it's not because you did all these good things. We don't, thank God we should do good things because Christ lives in us mm -hmm. and we need to let Christ live through us. But it's not about what we do. It's about what he's done. Mm -hmm. And so we need to come to God to receive from God, just like we came to Jesus. It's not about me. It's about you. Thank you, Jesus that you took my sickness, that you took my anxiety, that you took my poverty, that you took my sin and, and come to him that way mm -hmm. and, and receive based on what Jesus has already done. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have this better priesthood, Jesus, and we have this better covenant because it's not based on our performance, it's based on his performance. He's the guarantee of the new covenant and we have a better sanctuary and a better sacrifice. And Hebrews 9 talks about this. And so he's talking about in the Old Covenant, they had a sanctuary. And, and when Moses built this sanctuary, he had to build it 
and he had to do it just like God told him, and he had to follow the pattern in the heavens for the earthly sanctuary. But in this sanctuary, this uh, talks about the most holy place. In, it, in, in the holy place, we can read this in Hebrews 9, verse 6. When these things were ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, or the holy place, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second, the most highly holy place, went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself for the heirs of the people, the Holy Ghost showing that the way into the holiest of all was not made manifest or complete or perfect while the first tabernacle was standing. And so he says they had this tabernacle and they went into the holy place, but they didn't go beyond the veil. The high priest went only beyond the veil once a year. And when he went, he took blood sacrifice for his own sin and for the sin of the people. Mm -hmm. and, and that blood that he offered was like a IOU until Christ came and Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, that veil of the temple, we talked about this other, the other day, it was ripped in two. You said the thing was like three foot thick, mm -hmm. woven together of different materials. It was ripped in two from the top to the bottom. God saying, listen, you can come into my presence. Thank God we can come into the presence of God 365, 24, seven. You know, and, and not only that, but God said, I wanna go live in the hearts of men. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe until Jesus died and shed his blood that God really didn't live in any human person. The spirit of God would come on them, mm -hmm. but he didn't live in them like, praise God, Jesus has taken up residence. We have the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead living on the inside of mm -hmm. us today. You know, we've got more than any Old Testament believer has. I think of, you know, um, just, just think of how, how um, significant the Holy of Holies was that the high priest could only come in once a year. Uh, for God to make you a Holy of Holies and for His Spirit to live in you, Praise God. Um, something had to change. You know, that, that Holy of Holies, it was perfect. It was, it was a, a very wonderful place. It's where, you know, the Bible talks about it. You know, the, the, the Ark of the Covenant was there with the manna, Aaron's rod, the tablets of the covenant, those three things were inside the ark. And, um, Amen. You know, that, like we are now the Holy of Holies, if the, you know, the Spirit of God can dwell in us. So in order for that to happen, you had to have a new heart, you know, and the Bible talks about that, um, that I will take out of you the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. He's going to give you a new heart. And that's Amen. why, that's why we can know him and be, be sons and daughters and, and know the Lord and let God teach us. Right. He teaches us from the Spirit. So mm -hmm. we have a better sanctuary, which is the body of Christ, and we have a better sacrifice, which is the blood of Christ. We go on and read this in Hebrews chapter 9, uh, verse 11. It says, Christ became a high priest of good things to come. That's the new covenant. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle, his body, not made with hands, that is say, this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So we, we have a better tabernacle, that's the body of Christ, and we have a better sacrifice, that's the blood of Christ. Look at what verse 13 says and 14. He says, for if the blood of bulls and goats, the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the pure purifying of the flesh. The old covenant sacrifices dealt with the physical man. Mm -hmm. But he says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to make you servants of the living God. Mm -hmm. the, the, the new covenant sacrifice deals with our heart. Mm -hmm. Deals with our spirit and with our soul, with our conscience. Yeah. And so, um, we went from performance mentality to Christ, per, men, uh, uh, you know, to, to his mentality. You know, it, it's, it's not what we've done. It's not our work, but it's his work. Mm -hmm. It's not our sacrifice, but it's his sacrifice. And that's why you can now be a living sacrifice. You know, Romans 12, verse 1, um, Paul says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves as a living sacrifice. And um, that's not a, a legalistic statement. That's actually a very a powerful statement that you, as a believer, can now be a living sacrifice. You know, in the Old Testament, um, with the, the priests of Levi, the, those sacrifices had to be perfect. You know, like you couldn't have a cow with a, a broken hoof or a broken ear. It had right. to be perfect, <laughs> spotless. Um, it had to be, you know, uh, 
a, a show, show cow, show goat, whatever it was, it had to be perfect. And uh, in the New Testament, you can be a living sacrifice, and that's actually very, very powerful. So God has perfected us Amen. through the sacrifice of Jesus. So we went from our performance to his performance. We, we've got a, a better priesthood. Jesus is the great high priest. We're a priesthood of believers. We've got a better sanctuary, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. We've got a better sacrifice, the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. Those Old Testament sacrifices dealt with the outward man. The, in, the New Testament sacrifice, the blood of Jesus, deals with the spirit of man, with the inward man. Mm -hmm. and, and he talks a little bit more about this blood. And he says in verse 19 to verse 22, we'll just read this. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet and hyssop and sprinkled the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has adjoined to you. God enjoined this new covenant to us. Mm -hmm. This new covenant is not our idea. This new covenant is God's idea. And he says this, Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and the vessels of ministry. So the tabernacle and then the people. And, mm -hmm. and so we're covered by the sacrifice. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. But without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Thank God our sins are not only forgiven, they're remitted. There is no more sense of guilt or debt. They have been paid for. And because of that, we can have a brand new life. And that's what Hebrews chapter 10 talks about. Mm -hmm. So everything's been made new. We have a better priest, Jesus. We have a priesthood of believers. We have a better sanctuary, the body of Christ. We have a better sacrifice, the blood of Christ. And we have a better life because of Jesus. And we'll go more into that in our broadcast tomorrow. Thanks so much for being with us today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you need prayer, give us a call. Or if you'd like to get this teaching on Hebrews, we'd like to share it with you. Blessings.